show possible the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month. You saw him earlier, about to see him again. Very funny guy, Mr. Jesse Jarvis. Cormix, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I know this is like a marathon of comedy awesomeness, but good lord, we can't thank you enough for sticking around. Um, I know when you do when you do comedy, you got to start out with like a funny joke, but like I just want to tell you the story that happened to me about a week ago, if that's okay. Because when you do comedy, you end up in situations for the good and for the bad, whatever. But uh, I was at this place in Newport News, and uh, have a good night. <laughs> I was at this place in Newport News, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to perform, I'm writing in the back room, and this guy comes up, this drunk redneck, straw cowboy hat on, American flag bandana, under the hat. He had six and a half teeth, alright? Like, he had six and a half teeth. I think one, probably for each hate crime he's committed. I'm not sure. The half one being that he didn't act alone. He had his dog, Texas Justice, with him. <laughs> and he is a Pomeranian, I think. I don't know why this was, was in my head. But like, he comes out to me, first thing out of his mouth is like, you're a Jew, aren't you? <laughs> nope. I am just as shocked as you are. <laughs> He's like, well, you better be funny, Jew. Which, which kind of came off as a threat. But it's like, and then I go on stage, I do my thing, and then afterwards it's like, hey, hey, you, hey, come here, we're, we're gonna go to the back room. And I was like, hey, dude, I'm not Jewish, I'm Native American, by the way. Uh, he's like, no, 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 come back here, you're really funny, I wanna talk to you in the back. Like, no, no, I'm not coming back there with you. I know how this movie ends. It doesn't end well for Jews or Native Americans. Like, God damn it. All right, uh, yeah, like, doing comedy, um, you know, we perform, but I like to also think of myself as kind of a businessman. Also, like, I have business ideas. I got this one idea where it's like an in-flight grill service, right? And you go, on, you go on your flight, you, like, order burgers, chicken, whatever, and uh, it's going to be called Steaks on a Plane. <laughs> like, I really need you guys to invest in this, though, because I owe Sam Jackson, like, $10,000. <laughs> Because I paid him to do a voice recording. He's like, I cannot eat enough of these motherfucking steaks on this motherfucking plane. Please invest because that fucker owes me money. <laughs> I hope it goes better than my last business venture where I was, uh, I was an erotic dancer that dressed as a British serial killer. <laughs> His name's Jack the Stripper. <laughs> it was either that or Harry Poppins. Like, you can, you can call that one, but I'm a businessman, all right? God, speaking of planes, um, I don't know if anybody read this article last week, but uh, allegedly Mark Wahlberg was supposed to be on one of those fateful 9-11 flights, all right? And this is relevant to you because according to Mark Wahlberg, had he been on that flight, 9-11 would apparently would never have happened. It's like, yeah, there would have been a lot of bloodshed for his class, but it wouldn't have been any of us. It's like, oh, really? So you just forget all about coach? He's <laughs> like, no, I can't go back there. If I go back there and don't sign any autographs, they'll kill me. Mark Wahlberg, I wish you understood irony. I really wish you understood irony. But it's like, but his whole thing is just like, as is, is, is primitive as Al Qaeda's weapons are, you know, they were still led by one of the most dangerous masterminds of the last hundred years. You led Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Like, where do you fucking get off, you fucking asshole? And he's like, God damn it. And he's like, you know, like, by this point, by the way, if you look at 9-11, by this point, the only thing he's really done is boogie nights, you know? And in his mind, he's like, 9-11 was just gonna be another day that was just known as, like, Mark Wahlberg flexed his ass-kicking muscle once again. But I was like, dude, you're in boogie nights. The only muscle you flexed would help you out in a sword fight. <laughs> I mean, oh, that was my attempt at a, at a Mark Wahlberg 9-11 dick joke. That was, that is a better ending. But, no, I want to talk about something because, uh, you know, this stuff's been a lot in the news lately, but it's, it's 2012. Why the fuck is homophobia still a problem in this country? Like, why the fuck? It, it's, 
and this stems from a conversation I had with a friend of mine. We were at a, we were out somewhere, and he was like, "No, man, I don't do that. I don't like the taste of cock." I was like, "How do you know that?" I was like, "Oh, it's just something I know about myself." What was the what was do gay people bother you? Something like, well, no, it's just like you know, I know it's out there, so I can't help but think about it. I was like, well, then don't fucking think about it. It has no effect on your life whatsoever. Don't think of, like pimento love doesn't sound like it would be my kind of thing, but like, like maybe you should just try it. Like if I thought about pimento love, I would fucking try it. Maybe you should, maybe you should try like figure out something about it. He's like, no, man, fuck, I ain't do, I ain't gonna do that. Fuck that. But, like. Like, what if he doesn't like me? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. You're gonna learn something about yourself. Well, what I'm saying is, if I take a, if I take a man to Lobster Fest, <laughs> and we get the cheddar biscuits, and then we go watch Pretty Woman on Netflix, I'm just saying, you should appreciate that. I'm not gay, I'm just saying. I think I can't help but think about it sometimes. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll leave you guys on this. This is just another thought. It's like, why the fuck is fast food trying to reinvent itself as something that it's not? Why, why is that a thing? You know, you see these commercials, and they're like, oh yeah, we're using fancy ingredients and artists and flappers. I'm like, really? So you're gonna take that same thing that causes me diarrhea, and then just smash it down between two pieces of bread so it looks like a disgusting book no one wants to read. <laughs> like, well yeah, we're making fancy food now. It's like, no, you're not. Like, that looks like, like a cat threw up into a trapper keeper. That's fucking bullshit. You're committing a hate crime on my stomach. And then finally they admit to it. They're like, okay, fine, we admit it. We're trying to take something that's awful and trying to make it appealing to people. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 I get it, I get it. Kind of like Katherine Heigl movies. <laughs> that makes sense. McCormick's, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for coming out. And come back, everybody. Keep that applause going. That was the man right there, Jesse Jarvis. He makes this happen. Keep putting your hands together. Got a couple more people coming up. Next on the stage, very funny guy, all the way from Charlottesville area, Mr. Joe Shea. Woo! Joe Shea. Joe What's up, McCormick's? Hey. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm actually coming up here a little heartbroken tonight. I had something very sad happen to me. I'm gonna share with you guys. Uh, this girl I work with crazy about her. She's finally single for the first time since I've known her. I told her how I feel about her, and uh, she told me that I'm not her type. Uh, clearly she has not read the parable of the green eggs and ham, the, uh, the great moral story where the main character sees the green eggs and ham and thinks that it's not for him, uh, and then he tries it and loves it. Uh, from which we can learn that you don't really know if something's for you until you've had it inside you. Jokes. Uh, <laughs> Where's Adrian? Would you, could you in my car? Would you, could you in my house? Would you, could you just the tip? What's next? Taxes. I, uh, I got my taxes done, which is super depressing when you're someone like me, because uh, I don't own shit. Uh, and you would think I could just say, like, I don't own shit, here's my income, do my taxes. But they, they insist on making a point of how much nothing you own, right? They have questions every step of the way, like, uh, you know, do you have any investments? No? Okay. Uh, do you have any offshore bank accounts? No. Do you, uh, do you own any prop? No. Okay. Uh, do you, a rock. Do you have a rock? Like, in your, in, in your pocket? Do you, do you have shit? Do you have anything at all? Do you have any more clothes than what you're wearing? No. <laughs> I got, like, 23 bucks. Uh, sucks. But I'm looking forward to getting my check back. Uh, I'm a strong believer in reinvesting in the local community. So uh, I intend to support my local ABC store quite thoroughly. Uh, I'm a big fan of small business, a uh, big fan of agriculture. So uh, I plan on supporting that sector. I'm going to buy a lot of weed and tequila, all right? I got 800 bucks coming to me, I'm going to buy weed and tequila. If that sounds like a party, come buy my crib. Uh, we have $800 worth. It's going to be a good day. I like you guys. The promise is all right. 
You guys can do some offensive shit. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not like a super offensive person, but sometimes, sometimes I offend myself. Like that's really awkward. Like I'm, when I'm in the car, I'm normally pretty cool, but like if you make me take my cruise control off, I want to light you on fire. Uh, which leads to like, I feel bad. I was on the interstate and uh, this dude cut in front of me and, and he had like a veteran tag. And the first thing I saw when I thought that, I was like, oh my god, why didn't they shoot this fuck in the war? And I was like, no! No, that is odd. Did I think that? That is embarrassing. My god. Offensive. So, uh, I saw on my homepage the other day that uh, Sweden has this really cool idea. They, they made a, a Twitter, Twitter link, at Sweden. And uh, they're going to pass it around to a random person each week. Uh, and it can be, you know, like a priest or, or like... Uh, I don't know, Baker, just random people. And I was like, man, that was a really cool idea. And the second thing I thought was, man, they could never do that in America. Because <laughs> you, would, you would get it to somebody who has like some cause, like, you know, I believe that dogs should be treated equally as people. And then the next week you'd have shit like, Tom Brady's a faggot! And like, you can't. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's no good. That's no good. Uh, one more thing before I get out of here. We're gonna try this. I've never done this before. Uh, I have advice for anyone who's in a relationship. Um, yeah, it's great to be funny. It's great to have comedic ideas. Um, be careful with when you try them out, because my part of my problem is like if I think something's funny, I'm gonna say it. I can't help myself. Uh, my ex-girlfriend and I were at her parents' house, and uh, her and her sister have like next door rooms, right? But the wall is really thin. So we're just hanging out, we're not really doing anything, but we hear a very familiar sound coming from the other half of that wall. Uh, and I don't know, she and her sister were like really competitive, so she's like, well, we're fucking too. And I'm not gonna argue, so we're, you know. It's, uh, I felt bad for the parents, by the way, because they were trying to like out loud each other, but the parents were still in the house, so that was terrible. But, uh, but the wall's right here, and you hear it on either side. Oh, 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 oh. Change your partners! <laughs> they did not think that shit was funny. Right. Right, I'm Joe Shea, I'm out of here. Thanks, y'all. Keep it going for Joe Shea. Came all the way from Charlottesville, y'all, to entertain you. Next, coming to the stage, we have Jordan Slayton. Jordan Slayton! Yeah! <laughs> Oh, Next coming to the stage, Mr. Steve Zahn. Give it up for Steve Zahn. Woo. Thank you very much. Give it up for Mikkel. Come on, keep it going. She's been doing great all night. All right. Quick question right off the bat. Does anybody have that friend that makes a funny face that you can't help but notice? Yeah. One person? Bullshit. Come on. Silence. All right. I can see this is going to go great. All right. I'm going to keep this going. Uh, I have that one friend, and uh, he makes his face when he gets out in the sun. A lot of people do, but you know, you notice when it's something really funny. He, for example, my buddy's name is Pringle. Insert your potato chip jokes here. But uh, me, him, and one of my other buddies were out at a uh, sporting event. I'm not going to mention what because I don't want to be judged as a redneck. But uh, we were at a sporting event a couple of years ago. And uh, the night before, my buddy's like, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. I said, why? And he's like, because he's going to get out in the sun and he's going to start making that face. And before I go any further, the face is like this. Folks, he looks like Sloth from the Goonies got bitch smacked. <laughs> I have a feeling some of y'all are going to go home and Google that later on. Like, I'm sure somebody's photoshopped it or something. But sure enough, five minutes, five minutes out there, I look over to him and he's just like, Wait, have you ever thought about buying some sunglasses? Or at least some transitions? My buddy wears glasses in case you don't know what transitions are. Anyway, because that joke flopped. Um, all right. Um, one of the, one of my buddies that I just mentioned, 
Um, a couple, this happened a couple of years ago. It's a true story. We went to this uh, nice restaurant, and uh, at the table next to us is a couple of guys. Um, they were they were gay. I got nothing against gay people, but I I haven't even told the funny part. And it, <laughs> no punchline needed. But uh, all right, Joe. Yeah, I'll be back. All right. My set's going so well, Joe walked out on me. Damn it. Uh, but anyway, getting back to it. Uh, we're sitting we're sitting there, and the, the two guys at the table next to us, um, the waiter that we had, we actually went to high school with this guy, and he's talking to him, and th these two guys are like, yeah, we're rappers. We're rappers. Yeah, we're rappers. And he, that, you know, in that little high-pitched, feminine voice. And... As soon as they say that, I get a text message. Oh, look at it. It's from my buddy sitting across the table from me. The message reads, Rapper, Pitcher, Catcher. I'm like, I don't know how that would work out. What, I mean, what, what kind of lines are they going to drop to each other while they're doing it? Anybody imagine that? That is the strangest experience I've ever had at Golden Corral. <laughs> Oh, you act like you're surprised. I'm fat. You should have seen it coming. But uh, that brings me to this point. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder what I would be like in bed with some ladies. <laughs> you know, you know, hot ladies. You know, I'm a fat guy. I got a picture. What it would be like to be with a hot woman? Because what hot girls gonna be attracted to this guy? Ladies, I'm single. But uh. Woo! Woo for being single. Yeah. But my point is, how, how do you think a woman would view me like Austin Powers? Like, do I make you horny, baby? You know, or, you know, or that face I make, like... Yes, I make that face in bed like my body makes outside. But, uh... Yeah, just, like, I would do it in the back of uh, my old Ford Taurus. Yes, I had a Ford Taurus too. Not anymore. It broke. Rest in peace, Ford Taurus. Anyway, that's my time. I'm Steve Zahn. Thank you very much. Steve Zahn, everybody. Very excited about the man coming to the stage next. Bringing you comedy from the wild, wild west end, Mr. Jesse Thomas.